who are here. Right? All of you have joined, I suppose. Is it? So shall we start? All right. So uh, without much delay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so Vijayit has already introduced you. Uh, my name is Varsha Malki and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology and we are so delighted this afternoon and it's an absolute pleasure, I must say, to be here at you know, Asia's biggest paranormal convention, ScareCon 2021. And uh, I would like to welcome all of you uh, today. Okay, all right. Uh, is it not audible? One second. I just... Uh, Am I am I audible now? Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I, I quickly I just want to you know welcome all of you for uh, joining us today online for this online event, and we are looking forward to having a panel discussion as a part of the Chris Cross event. Uh, titling the importance, how, how important is it to bridge the gap between psychology and parapsychology. So before beginning, I want to specifically thank Sarabji Mohanty, who is a professional paranormal investigator, and also Pooja Vijay, who is a psychic and founder of Parapsychology and Investigation Research Society, for giving me this opportunity to moderate such an informative panel, and also for uh, hosting all of us here. So thank you on behalf of everyone who is here today for hosting us and creating this wonderful opportunity. So we are also joined by many you know, well-known pioneers in the field of uh, paranormal, if I'm not wrong, from around the world. So in their absence here, I would like to welcome them as well. So, well, now I just want to do a really quick introduction of our really all-star panel, I must say. Uh, we have with us... Uh, Mr. Kostu D, who is a student of master's in counseling psychology. So we are delighted to have you, Mr. Kostu, here. And thank you for joining with us today for this event. Kostu, are you there? Yeah, yeah ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank yeah, you for the introduction. Yeah, well, well, welcome, Kostu. Welcome. So we are also joined by someone who is, again, a psychology student. Uh, Mr. Slope Divan, I guess, yeah. So thank you for joining and coming for this session, uh, Slope. You there, Slope? Can I hear from Slope? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lo. And also, uh, we have with us a psychology a student who is a uh, uh, okay, who is a master's in psychology, uh, Ms. Tejasvi Bhania, I suppose. So Tejasvi is here with us today. Uh, no, Tejasvi is not here as of now. She is facing some technical issues. So maybe okay. we will continue and uh, we'll let her decide, you know, whenever she joins. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine, fine with me. Okay, so congratulations all of you. So we are so delighted to have you all with us. Welcome you all for this event and... We are really looking forward to have some insight in the field of uh, paranormal or parapsychology from you. So we are looking forward to having this, uh, you know, an interesting conversation about how we can get more people in the field of parapsychology and also, you know, how we can, uh, or if it is necessary, how and we can, you know, bridge the gap if there is a gap between psychology and parapsychology. And I must say, like, you know, going to start, I'm just going to start by saying this, that this has always been the priority of PES to, uh, you know, bringing light into darkness. So this panel is just going to be a sort of like an, you know, appetizer, I must say. So we are not going to get into everything in a, you know, tremendous amount of depth in here. So feel free to, you know, if, uh, you know, follow up with the panelist afterwards later on, if you want to discuss anything that is left apart. So as I was doing a little research today, um, uh, a couple of few things that you know I thought were pretty uh, telling, should we say? So, uh, in this panel, we are going to discuss about uh, you know and very oftenly overlooked field, I must say. So, which is uh, you know from time to time, which is pushed in, which is pushed out from the mainstream of psychology. So, this topic, parapsychology, is uh, you know unique with its you know, invisible boundaries. It, it is uh, you know. 
it is at times branches out to our culture and even our existence as a human species but as an academic discipline it is still struggling somewhere you know for an identity in the mainstream of psychology if i'm not wrong so drawing the lines between the intangible abstract concepts where the you know subject emotions and you uh, know the apprehension the flourish and the objective stance of this scientific uh, you know field the validity it has it is just you know the kamsam task so it includes so many abstract concepts it has so many un answered phenomena here and so uh, you know unexplained it is left unexplained many of the phenomena so when we approach uh, uh, what we say para psychology there are uh, you know many controversies surrounding to these topics many uh, misconceptions many challenges that can only be uh, you know addressed by further disclosure in this particular field so having said that today so we are going to be talking about how we can bridge that particular gap between uh, psychology and parapsychology now as a panel moderator today i think uh, i'll be guiding us towards this process we have a uh, short period of 40 minutes i suppose so we are going to break it into distinct chunks so um, initially you all will be giving your opinion and a few questions for the panelists who are here and the uh, rest yeah so later we'll uh, wrap up the session with that so let's get right into this uh, with our you know first question for the panelist which is okay let me ask miss uh, shloka diva uh, shlok divan if uh, let me show you Sloka, right? Okay, okay. Sorry, Sloka. That's uh, Sloka. Okay, all right. So, uh, Sloka, my first question is that: Are you a believer of parapsychology or paranormal? So, yes. what, what what would you say sparked your interest in this particular field of parapsychology? I just want to know your thought on this. Yeah, I, mean, I have a belief in this. Like, I have never seen anything like this, but. I kind of feel that what happens after death, like all that questions that we have as a youngster, right? So I'm a student of psychology, and mm -hmm. in the last year, uh, some parapsychology uh, related subjects were there, the topics related that. So after that, my interest became more into this, and I was watching movies like horror movies that we all see and all. So yeah, <laughs> because of that, also the interest was there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Okay, looking into the movies, or uh, no? Do you have any personal, uh, no, experience? Do you experience anything related to parapsychology or paranormal that has dragged you into this particular field? No, I have not experienced, but I have tried to do that. Like uh, mm -hmm. in the, I have went to the like, Kabristan in Amars and that Lady Maryvala, if you know that. Yeah, I have tried many things like that, but uh, nothing happened. So yeah. Okay, so you heard things from your friends or relatives, I suppose, yeah. in that case. Yeah, mm -hmm. like stories that or uh, rumors or stories, whatever we say. So mm -hmm. all that, yeah, I have heard many, but I have never experienced one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So can we hear from that? Thank you, thank you so much, Loka. So yes. next we have Mr. Pastu with us. Pastu, who would like to share your thought? You want me to repeat the question? I just asked Shloka about: Are you a believer of uh, paranormal or parapsychology? So, what would you say that you know that has sparked your interest in this particular field? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, firstly, I believe in paranormal, and the reason which I like what sparked uh, the, this interest in me is like. Uh, as uh, like it, my my uh, re, like my interest was for the same reason just as Sarvajit, uh, the fear. So what like growing up like when I was a kid, I used to be mostly with my grand grandparents and my aunt. So like they used to tell me all kinds of stories like about ghosts, demons, gods, etc. So like back then, uh, hearing those stories, I always used to wonder and I was scared. Then also we used to watch movies and stuff. plus then uh, thanks to my imagination i don't know how i what happened but like i used to imagine like if there is a blank space then i would create a story if someone appears there then what would happen etc etc so initially that was the reason 
but then as i was growing up i started thinking what exactly is that thing which i am fearing uh, like which which might come from the dark and take me away so that is the reason i first entered into this and then as i went to college i was introduced to psychology there is some a branch where i could study about all of this so that is when i came across parapsychology and then like that was the beginning so like since then i have been into this like continuously okay you said that you had studied a few things already in this field if you would like to share few things about that uh, it's not that much like i am not i won't say that i haven't i have studied like uh, deeper into it it's just the basic things such as uh, the extra sensory perceptions or the kinesis or uh, how this uh, like the ghost appearances and all happen what exactly spirits are so i'm just having this brief idea for as of now okay all right okay thank you thank you so much uh, uh, fastu so okay moving on towards my second question that's when we this is the introduction so uh, we'll start with uh, kaustav itself so kaustav uh, would you like to tell i mean how do you find this para psychology uh, is you know been integrated in this mainstream psychology or giving it in another way why para psychology is still struggling you know to get its mark in the mainstream of psychology any any thought over this uh, yeah see, like if it was to happen if it were to happen that para psychology comes into the mainstream that would be the happiest thing for me but mm-hmm. the reason i feel here uh, that the field is struggling to come into the mainstream yet is the attitude of people towards it like this field what i feel is that people mostly view the all these things uh from the fearful eye like they are much more fear and uh, there is much more fear about it like uh, since people watch movies and all and there, there are like all sort of misunderstandings about spirits so it's like uh, that is the one reason that for which people are not curious enough to get into it and study what exactly it is and other than that what i would say is that see uh, whenever we talk about parapsychology or paranormal so this one question comes up like what scientific proof do you have for this one? so like when i thought of this i came across uh, like when like as uh, i start i was just like shuffling my no- books and all some of my some of my notes so like that is when i came across a note where uh, i had written like it was during my first year of bachelors uh, we had uh, told that uh, what scientific attitude exactly is so like if people say that uh you should think of uh, it uh, in a scientific manner uh, think of sci- uh, parapsychology in a scientific manner so what i feel is scientific attitude comprises of three things that is curiosity skeptical thinking and humility and instead of that what is happening is instead of curiosity it is replaced by fear so people are not curious enough to explore being skeptical and having your own beliefs is okay but people should also keep this in mind that there must be something and like this humility factor is necessary that they should be know that uh, like yeah they are vulnerable to error as well there might be something which we don't see and which we don't know about but it can still exist so that is one factor like that is the most important factor which i feel is uh, the reason parapsychology is not yet into the mainstream psychology okay the same question goes to shloka Uh, Shloka, would like to share your opinion on this. You want me to yeah. repeat the question Mine for was... you? No, no, it's okay. okay. I'll give my other question. Yeah. Mine yeah. was what okay. he said that the proof people like if people are in psychology, so they think it is in a scientific way. Okay. Means they need proof of something. That ये होगा तो ये होगा तो सब. But uh, in parapsychology, you can't say yeah that this is the like you can't just state that. Yes, this is the right thing. Asa hi hoga. You can't say that. It can be sometimes the device problem or the fluctuations in that. So that proper, um, what is it? The proper result that we want, it uh, it can't be, it can't be there. So the main thing I think that it is the proof, the scientific scientific proof. And sometimes the uh, people uh, in India, like uh, because of the fear, they say, मतलब 
वो ऐसा मानते कि नहीं ऐसा हो ही नहीं सकता ऐसा कुछ नहीं होता सिर्फ बातें होती है क्योंकि उनको डर रहता है डर की वजह से वो सिर्फ रीजन देता है मतलब ऐसा वो खुद फेस नहीं करना चाहते ना वो किसी और को फेस करने देता है वो सिर्फ ऐसा मान लेते हैं खुद से कि हाँ ये हो ही नहीं सकता ऐसा होता ही नहीं ओके 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 फाइन फाइन देन नाउ दिस इज गेटिंग इंटरेस्टिंग नाउ थैंक यू सो मच टोका एंड ऑल सो कैरिंग दिस फॉरवर्ड अ लिटिल विट यू नो मोर आई जस्ट वांट टू नो नाउ सिंस दैट यू आर स्पीकिंग अबाउट यू नो पीपल्स बिलीफ सिस्टम इन हियर लाइक दे डोंट बिलीव इन सच क्राइटेरियाज व्हेन यू नो समथिंग हैपेंस टू एन इंडिविजुअल एंड वेयर एज व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट साइकोलॉजी uh yes of course we have standard we have set researches empirically that is already there so that becomes you know very easy for the people to understand this particular phase than this so when it comes to uh, you know psychology and parapsychology when we see, uh, speak about these two branches what is normal and what is abnormal or what is not normal non normal or uh let's put it at what is common and what is that something which is uncommon when we speak about parapsychology and psychology what is normal and what is you know not normal in this field anyone can you know unmute and you can uh, contribute to this because see uh, the question is you know with the context of basically we have something called as uh, bell curve i think you all are aware about the bell curve the pro- normal probability curve right so most of the uh, disorders in psychology if we have something if it falls into this particular curve and those individuals who are at the extremes so based on that is what you know the diagnosis or the conclusions are made right so with respect to that concept uh, so what is something that is normal what is something that is not normal in this field you know separately if you can just give your ideas on this uh like if i were to say like what is normal and what is not normal between these fields is that the common factor between these two fields is what uh, i would say that people uh, experience what people go through uh, during like in both the cases like let's say in psychology uh, that people go through the hallucinations and delusions right so whatever they experience it's kind of a uh, same experience can be observed in paranormal as well when people hear voices of someone or they they think that uh, they saw something so this is a factor that is i feel that this is a factor that is common in both the fields but this very factor is the reason why both the fields are not that developed because like uh, this factor when uh, th- uh, things seem like uh, paranormal but uh, at times they are uh, just a psychological disorder but when there uh, people think that uh, it might be a psychological disorder but things might actually be something uh, of a paranormal so it's like a double edged sword and like it is hitting both the uh, ends like both psychology and parapsychology and as of the uh, uncommon things i would say is that uh, the other things which uh, we call as extra sensory perception or uh, let's say kinesis and all like if we talk about that in parapsychology so then that we can talk only in parapsychology but psychology needs like psychology is more focused on the evidences which we have and right now we don't have such tools or such uh, parameters as you said uh, we don't have that uh, as of now in present to measure those things but i don't but like uh, i also think that this might be a case in present but not in the future like we might be able to develop something so then then if these things like if we find something some proper evidence Uh, for uh, things like extra sensory perception or so then this might be included in psychology as well okay any thoughts from shloka on this shloka about uh, normal non normal uh, which is very common or not common in these fields oh uh, i think it's up to people's belief and experience experience that people have on daily basis yeah so this is okay you are saying that it is just you know based on the belief system so those uh, yeah. thing that yes they believe yes it is common for all of them those who uh, think that because, uh, yeah because if people are like well educated and all they will think that yeah this is a normal disorder some kind of disorder like sleeping disorder they are 
just having an illusion and all. And if people say, no, I saw something, I hear voices, I see people which are normally not there. So like other people will say that, it's a gawar, 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 it's a gawar. Yeah. So it's, it's about, it's upon the people who just believe that it is there or it is not there. Or it's on the experience that what the person individually is experiencing. Okay, fine. So, uh, see, uh, okay. So, basically, where we are ending up is the belief system, right? So, okay. How about uh, rectifying the attitude of the individual, okay, towards parapsychology and psychology phenomena? How about that? Like, rather than imposing it and, you know, giving a general description, saying that, yes, ghosts exist or the spirits exist, how about paraphrasing it into what happens when someone experience such paranormal okay more about into what we can say phenomenology rather than you know uh, giving a general idea okay this is what it is this is what it exists are you getting the point uh, yeah huh, okay yeah. okay yes 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 so like as you said that phrasing like the way we use the words it it is like it is something that would make a difference. Like what happens when uh, someone experiences paranormal is way too different and way too. Uh, what I would say is that like it's uh, better. It's a better explanation than uh, do ghosts exist or spirit exists. Well, because like uh, if the problem here, what I feel is that uh, the people uh, who are more uh, ha who have this uh, rigid attitude. So like due to this rigid attitude, uh, what happens is like they are more focused on their beliefs and not uh, focusing on the facts. Like it might be the cause or like this might be the reason, uh, even if it is like proven, like uh, now that we have a, like such a skillful in investigators in paranormal. So like they, they are working. So like they must be having some uh, evidences, right? But the fact that people are so rigid with their attitudes, uh, about this, uh, whether ghosts exist or not. This is where the problem lies. And like, if we uh, paraphrase it and like uh, come come up with terms like uh, or like better an explanation, then yeah, that would actually make a change. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Sloka, anything on this? Do you have any take on this? Uh, no, no, no opinion on this. So first of all, we are just telling that it is better to, you know, go with paraphrasing and trying to explain the phenomena, basically, rather than generalizing as such to everything, because such kind of uh, uh, what we say, the events in parapsychology that we say it is, uh, uh, what we say, less than 70%, if I'm not wrong. So that won't fall under an average, uh, what we say, the Bell's curve. If we take it like that. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Right. So basically, uh, like scientifically speaking, uh, we consider anything to be, uh, you know, uh, general when it is there, uh, like between 70% of average, right? So these uh, phenomena, these kind of experiences, okay, poltergeist experience, telepathy, and all those extrasensory perceptions, they exist for about, let's say, 30 to 40% of the people, they are aware about this, right? And even they experience this, yeah. right? Okay, all right, all right, okay. So now this late, uh, you know, is giving me uh, another question to ask you. We have, you know, in psychology, many assessment tools, correct? We have, uh, uh, you know, various parameters on the basis of which we measure an individual's behavior, okay? For example, uh, uh, for measuring personality of an individual, we have so many domains. We have near five factors. We have Icing's personality inventory. We have Minnesota multiphysic inventory. And to know any kind of behavior, 
okay to assess we have set tools that can measure the behavior of uh, you know the uh, individual that we can predict some amount of behavior and those uh, you know uh, the tools they are standardized standardized in the sense it has a set and definite statistics or you know a whole lot of process of psychometric that took place to say that yes this particular test can be given it has a set reliability we can depend on these tools okay and set validity that yes if you are going to measure the personality of an individual definitely that tool is going to measure the personality of an individual likewise we can say that uh, can we develop such tools to measure these paranormal phenomena uh, in in existence like to measure you know the existence of ghost or to know exactly how the telepathy is working whether it is happening or not like that the assessment tools yes ma'am like uh, developing such assessment tools is definitely possible and like i hope that in future we do develop something like that so that we could just study more and like the major factor here would be the research part because all those uh, things like all the tests which we have in psychology let it be uh, may it be like uh, mmpi or so but like all those te tests like came from research right they okay. developed like they developed a hypothesis they researched continuously they tried and like there were errors they rectified it so if we follow the same pattern and if we get that scope to research that deep in it then definitely it is possible to develop such tools and we hope like in future i really hope that happens yeah you are going to develop an assessment tool or uh, to uh, tool to detect a spirit whether it is their right in front of you or not. okay all right good good one good one shloka yeah you even you are going to uh, develop such kind of tool and you are going to standardize uh, such tool in near future i wish i always it would be great if yeah, such tool uh, come in future then okay any idea like how you are going to any rough idea i have figure that you have planned for this and this it's all same as you said that research research is the main thing to develop anything so if you want to make that accurate and the device that accurate then you have to go in a details research and it would take time but i hope one day we have the uh, tools like that that can give accurate measures or accurate accurate results of uh, what they want okay now that you are speaking about research okay that gave me another question like where exactly in the field of uh, parapsychology uh, there is a lack of uh, you know quantitative or qualitative research how it is lacking to contribute to such a you know type of research is it lacking in way or do we have uh, you know a good amount of research in this field uh, let's say quantitative or qualitative in any any of the field yeah quantity we have many quantity but from that quantity which is the correct one which uh, is uh, like which is the correct one and which is not the one matlab aise hi ऐसे ही कोई भी कुछ भी बोल देता है तो मतलब उसमें से कौन सी बात सही है और कौन सी बात गलत है तो वो डिफ्रेंशिएट करने में काफी टाइम होता है ये तो क्वांटिटी इन इंडिया वी हैव वेरी मच ऑन यस यस प्लीज गो ऑन यस लोकर यू आर टेलिंग अबाउट क्वालिटेटिव रिसर्च Yeah, the uh, yeah. So the, that's the thing that quality is what the thing that we need to know. Then the quantity we have many. Okay, you mean to say that yes, we definitely have a set of research with us. Yeah. Where exactly we are lacking? Uh, if you can just brief it out. Ah, uh, can't see that. Okay, uh, cost of you have anything to uh, contribute to this? Uh, like uh, as Loka said that like we in quantity wise like we have a lot of research here. So like we know like lot we have lots of legends and we have many people who say that they have experienced paranormal and so. So like we have many samples, but the problem here is that 
uh, we don't have that much of the instruments or let's say the appropriate uh, things to measure appropriate tools to measure what exactly uh, like to measure these variables let's say uh, and like since parapsychology is like now like in these current times it is it has started to get this uh, scientific attention so it will definitely uh, take a while so that uh, like it could be more developed and so like like since it is going to take a while so definitely it has its own limitations as well and as of the qualitative research i would say that like i think that it is more focused on the subjective experiences so like we won't have to uh, like we won't have to face challenges uh, like we would have to uh, face in quantitative uh, research all right so basically when we uh, were discussing about uh, the phenomena let me say mm -hmm. so when we were speaking about you know that phenomena what happened was uh, we were trying to paraphrase it correct if i'm not wrong like rather than giving it a set uh, saying that yes this happens okay yes it happened rather than that we can prove it with the help of phenomenology okay so there are certain types of you know uh, of methodology that we use in qualitative research so basically the, what you were speaking about is the individual experiences many of them have experienced this particular phenomena so when we try to dig upon in that that becomes the qualitative research correct so you are trying to know the themes you are trying to know all those uh, you know uh, basic experiences but on the other hand the quantitative part the empirical part the data part that we have okay i think somewhere the lack is there in the quantitative part with us what do you say quality definitely we have individuals who are experiencing all these things but uh, yeah there are few stances as well where you know people say that yes i have seen that uh, particular thing uh, in front of me or i have experienced something with me but by the time i have uh, you know i try to uh, gather something to prove it something uh, the next moment it is not there okay so that's just the qualitative research that is happening so near future how can we you know develop that into quantity how can we give that particular uh, evidence into a quantitative form in case you have happened that any idea what you can do in that uh, scenario we definitely uh, like i think we definitely need the proper tools or like proper uh, things to like in order to record these happenings right so uh, like as uh, a paranormal investigator would do they would use the emf sensors and so on so like usually what happens like people don't have such things with them Mm -hmm. so this is where the problem is that we don't have the evidence because we don't have these devices but like maybe like if we were to dig deep and we were to like uh, develop something like that then yeah it would be possible to develop something then uh, to uh, like gather the quantitative this like that would contribute in the quantitative research okay i think i uh, didn't ask uh, pastoba uh, his experience like did you have any real life experience while dealing with the clients or the patients during the practice regarding such paranormal thing in your life no as of uh, patients so uh, i am not yet like i'm not completed my masters so like i'm not practicing yet as of my personal experience i would say yeah quite a few times but i'm not very sure like if those were paranormal so, anything you would like to you know give us a description in detail like what exactly happened yeah so uh, this uh, like during this last year uh, when everyone was like in lockdown and like things were opening up little by little so my parents uh, started going to work as well so i used to be all alone at house and uh, during this very time like uh, halloween is the time like when the october starts i am just like getting all hyped up cuz i love halloween that much mm -hmm. so uh, during that time like during the starting days of october i suddenly start like i used to be alone so like i used to watch something or the other or i used to just play on mobile but i was alone but and during that time i used to feel like someone is watching me from a distance i started feeling that so firstly i thought that okay this might be some illusion like since i'm alone and like i'm pretty much watching into watching horror stuff as well so maybe that might be the reason 
but then i start like it ha- continued to happen so i thought of checking on it so i checked uh, my thought i tracked my thoughts as well i checked if, if i was hallucinating or like what exactly is happening but then i started to realize that whenever uh, i'm doing something it's not constant but whenever i'm doing something i'm so engrossed in something else which is totally unrelated to paranormal what happens is usually uh, i would feel that uh, uh, there is a sudden chill that would run through my spine and then i would feel that someone is standing behind me and someone is staring at me so this happened uh, like throughout the october i would say and uh, we also had uh, our paranormal meet up as well last year uh, during uh, 30 on 31st only so during uh, while sharing the experiences there too it was happening like i had that same experience uh, that during that meet up as well i also shared it with sarvajit and pooja ma'am so yeah that is uh, that experience i feel that it was something paranormal so like i also checked with them they said that maybe this like uh, as i wasn't feeling that uh, it is something threatening me or it's not harmful so they said that like pooja ma'am said that it might be a guardian angel or so so like but i'm not very sure since i don't have that evidence so yeah that was pretty much it and like since like the fun fact was that after halloween ended i never felt that chill again and i never felt that stare again uh, like when the november started so it was just till halloween so oh, only for that particular duration you had felt that yeah okay okay so okay i i i'll take that phase you said that uh, it might be a guardian angel right so yeah. i think with this i i understand that it is not always the negative energies which are there surrounding to us it can be positive like uh, when we are talking about you know guardian angels or angels or spirit animals something like that so to, is it always both the things yeah definitely like as uh, our paranormal investigator says that like there are as there are good humans and bad humans there are good spirits and bad spirits as well so it's not necessary like if you feel something then it has to be bad oh okay oh great 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 fine so we have almost come to the end we are out of time here we had got only 40 minutes so just a few things to you know uh, wrap up i have a final question for uh, all of you both of you who are there so i'm going to ask uh, sloka here sloka if there is one thing that you would like uh, you know uh, others to take away from this particular section what would it be as a student about hello. your experiences hello am i audible let them repeat please that's the glitch i think sorry there was a glitch i think in the middle can you please repeat your question okay so my question is if there is one thing that you like uh, you know uh, the audience okay since we are live streaming the audience to so take away from this particular session any one thing what would it be as a student of uh, psychology and someone who is very much interested in the parapsychology yeah the thing that would be that uh... we should uh, develop this para psychology as much as the psychology right now is it could it could be good if it is it could be more more than the psychology so the field in para psychology is now like very small and in uh, in india so i would like to develop that for whatever contribution it takes and the devices which we have which we can use in this we could make it more accurate and mm-hmm. yeah we can uh, try to just uh, expand this and as more as we can and it's not always the uh, bad the spirit as you just said right now it can be the good one so don't be too quick to judge something just take the time and just uh, yeah think of think on it a bit and then come to the final conclusion whatever it is okay first to one thing one thing last one thing that you want uh, you know the audience to take from this particular section what would that be uh, i would just say that uh, see whatever we know it's just a little part of like there is the whole thing which we don't know and what we know is just a little part of that so instead of being that like having this rigid attitude it would be better if we have this uh, openness and like uh, open mindset so like we could explore more things but like 
repeating the same things which we know won't make any difference but learn like maybe while learning something new or like exploring you will learn something that would actually like benefit you or like that would actually benefit the society the same thing goes with the paranormal as well so like because just because as and as you know ma'am like uh, the line between psychology and parapsychology is like very much blurred so people uh, like india is the most common place where uh, the problems are psychological but people still won't go to a psychologist but they will go to some baba and try to treat the person so knowing that where this makes a difference and where what is this line between the abnormal and paranormal to know about that to explore this field that is the reason one should explore and like it is very necessary yeah anything you want to say to your fellow mates who actually yeah, like it was great <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yes loka no same here yeah, i was just telling him okay okay fine okay so now i think you know it's fair enough to say that the biggest problem to the parapsychology field as had always since it began is the you know replication of the problem okay it's always been uh, there is always been a different claims that is made anything that is researched right now if someone else is researching the end part or the outcome that they are going to get i mean there is another you know, whole set of experiment that you know they some people they do some people they don't do and you know it's a big question here so is i real or is not so now as a result of parapsychology it has always and it have actually wrestled with a lot of these problems for lot longer i should say that the psychologist or the scientific field or the scientists even i think that a lot of time the skeptics as uh, costi was uh, speaking about the curiosity and the skeptics okay right? so the skeptics often they have you know uh, yeah skeptics they definitely have an overly negative view of parapsychology actually it's often the case that you know the parapsychologists they thought about these eco uh, issues before they use uh, to because they get criticized by skeptics all the time and that's even a good part uh, to certain extent because there they will get an idea that okay we have something to prove quantitatively or qualitatively so it is not always that you have to prove something yes 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 and yes even though if you have proved something that is no even that is the contribution to the field right if i'm not wrong so now what mostly happens is that the problem is the research paper which actually gets published are the ones with the positive results and uh, but you know you uh, people might have a, a mass of failed replications as well that no this is not the phenomena does not exist so those kind of papers they some just stuck away okay gathering dust in the file drawer or how big that problem is right so with this note i think we have come to the end of the session so thank you uh, kostub and thank you sloka for joining us today we really do appreciate your interest in this you know very important issue so on this note please uh, okay join me thank you so much thank the fantastic panel yes thank you <laughs> yeah, so much yeah, yeah. you actually do like a professor right now Oh my! I oh, know. Uh, I was I, I was actually taking class just before I this, know. so I just took the class and like I just uh, went to tour and got like. It was amazing. <laughs> it was very informative, and thank you so much. I am so glad that a topic like this could be discussed on a platform like Scarecon because it is important considering the current generation of psychologists who are coming in. They are very open to a subject like you know. Uh, call it telekinesis, call it psychokinesis, call it you know ghosts, spirits, or topics like those, and uh, more open to topics of possession, exorcism, and the effect it it has on mind. And uh, Vasha, to be very honest, we're very glad to have you at Pairs. You know, as I think one of the most professional researchers we have in Pairs. Thank you so much. But but no, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Costa. Thank you so much, Shloka, for joining in. I hope you people enjoyed it. and yeah see you people soon and costa see yeah. you tomorrow yes yes definitely and thank you so much like it was a pleasure to like as like you provided us a platform to speak no so, yeah, i think this good. platform was needed for pairs to and for the topic of parapsychology that is important i was yeah. very less sarabjit i'm telling you 
बच्चों को एआई के बारे में पढ़ाया जा रहा है because they are developing and i think it's high time we do also understand and try and figure out ke wo jo mind hai jiska koi existence human body mein no one knows where it actually lies and what are its capabilities and abilities when it comes to phenomena like parapsychology so thank you so much thank you so much varsha kostav sloka for making this very interesting very knowledgeable thank you and uh, hope you people are having an amazing time take care and happy halloween everyone happy halloween happy halloween Bye bye take care bye 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 bye